Many of us live careless lives, second by second, moment to moment. We know deep down that our behavior is destructive. We know we are slowly killing ourselves, and we think that our vices are too powerful for us to control. To stop is not a battle you win once. It's a continuous struggle that will never end. So we don't stop. We take another sip of an alcoholic beverage, another drag of a cigarette, another bite of something we shouldn't. I used to think it was impossible for me to control it, but that was just weakness. It was an escape. I know that now. I was 52 years old when I had my stroke. Doctors had warned me for years to get my weight under control, but they never got through to me. I have eaten whatever I wanted whenever I wanted for as long as I could remember. I was most certainly a big guy, but not excessively obese like those you see who can no longer walk unguided. My overall appearance didn't reflect just how unhealthy I was. My wife, my children, all grown up now, my friends, co-workers, everybody. They always tried to get me to eat better. I never listened. I wasn't even trying to change. I did what I wanted to do, living moment to moment. I was home alone when I felt the symptoms. The right side of my face became completely numb, my vision blurry. I was confused. I tried to take out my phone, but it dropped to the ground. I tried to speak, but just a moaning sound came out of my mouth. I remember standing up and trying to walk across the room. I was dizzy. The last thing I remembered was crashing into the ground. And then, I awoke in the hospital. My family was in there with me. I already saw it written all over their faces. We told you this would happen. Why didn't you listen to us? You could have easily prevented this. I tried to speak but found I had very little control over my voice. I said hello, but they could barely even make it out. My eldest son held my wife as she started to cry. I tried to sit up, but I found I could barely even move. I moaned. My eyes moved to my daughter, but she immediately turned away. She couldn't even bear to look at me. They were ashamed of me. I had chosen fast food over them. Sugar-ridden cola. Cake with three layers of icing. A doctor came into the room. Although I had very little control over my motor skills, I understood things perfectly well. The doctor explained that I had suffered a serious hemorrhagic stroke. There was a lot of blood still leaking into my brain, and I would require immediate surgery. He told me there was only a 60% survival rate, but that I had no choice. My family had already decided for me. I remember going into the operating room. I saw my wife take my hand, but I couldn't feel it. We're not saying goodbye, she said. I'll see you tomorrow, she smiled at me, but I could see how forced it was. I could see how scared she was. How disappointed in me she was. It's what I was thinking of when I went under. The disappointment in my wife's eyes. When I awoke, I could immediately feel that the surgery wasn't successful. Sure, I had survived, but it had damaged me much further. My thoughts were hazy now. I had trouble concentrating. I needed guidance for breathing. I had trouble looking around the room. I could no longer speak in any manner. I couldn't wheeze, I couldn't cough, I couldn't move. And in some places the numbness was replaced by agony. I don't know why or how, but the pain on my right side was excruciating. 
The amount of heat and pressure was unbearable, and I had no way to communicate it to the doctors. I tried to convince myself that it would get better, but it didn't. It maybe even got worse. I had nothing to pass the time. I was in far too much pain to ever really sleep. It was torture. Days passed before my family even came to visit. I guess they had already given up on me. It felt like they were only partly even there. They could barely even look at me. I saw the pity and disappointment in their eyes. It felt like it wasn't even really them, you know. These were not the people that I knew so well and that I loved so much. They made me feel worse whenever they came. I started to dislike when they visited me at all. Weeks passed. The pain never subsided. The visits never became more bearable. With no other distractions, my mind went to strange places. I would think back to those times that I would order two desserts after eating a large meal. It's just desserts I would often quip. I thought back to when I would laugh at those who suggested I should maybe have a salad for dinner. Those times were when I was home alone with no one watching, and I would eat until I was physically sick. That is what did this to me. I couldn't escape it. I dwelled on it more and more as time passed. How I would secretly order fast food on the way home from work before eating the healthy home-cooked meal prepared by my wife. The amount of sugar I put in my coffee. It started to consume me. It's all I could think about. Donuts, french fries, and gravy. The thought of them made me sick now. Sick. The horrific pain in my side never went away. Ice cream, milkshakes, my family staring over me in my bed. The things they said, the look in their eyes, fried chicken, double fudge brownies. It's just dessert. It was unbearable. It would never end, ever. And that's when he arrived in my room. I knew right away he was a man, but that he also wasn't. That's the best I can explain it. I'm not going to describe him because I think he would look different to everybody. He smiled at me. A smile that I wanted to trust, but I knew I couldn't. Well, my goodness. How are you? He asked me. His tone reeked of sarcasm. I couldn't respond. I know what consumes your thoughts. His smile widened. I know the pain you feel. I stared at him. There was little else I could do. I can end it, you know. I have that power. Would you like all of this to end? I didn't care who he was or what the price was. I was in agony. I would have done anything. This is the deal I have to offer. I'm going to fix you, almost back to normal. You'll even have another 15 years or so. Good years. That sarcastic smile appeared back on his face. But it comes at a price. A perpetual price. I won't say any more about it. He looked me up and down. Ooh, I know how much it hurts. I know how unbearable it is. But I must warn you, this is your only chance. If you agree, there is no going back. But if you decline, I won't ever return. I know you can't speak, but just think it to yourself. Yes or no, I'll know. It's up to you. That smile never left his face. I know how it sounds, how foolish it seems to make such a deal, but I chose in pure desperation. I couldn't bear another second of that pain. Whatever he had in store for me couldn't be much worse than this. I looked at him and I thought as hard as I could. Yes. Excellent, he said. He then snapped his fingers. 
I immediately felt much better. I sat up in the bed. I could talk again. I wasn't completely back to normal, but I was feeling much better. I'll see you in 15 years, he told me as he started walking away. Wait, I shouted after him. He stopped. He turned around. What's going to happen to me when I die in 15 years? In perpetuity? Can you at the very least tell me? He laughed out loud and shrugged his arms. He was looking around the room. Up and down. Wait. What do you mean? I asked. He was turning and walking away. But it started to dawn on me. These past few weeks weren't real. Me, in this hospital room, it was just a foreshadowing of what my eternal torment would be. Such pain. The souls of my family coming to visit, looking on in terror, pity, and disappointment. That's where I would be, forever, and in just 15 years. I wanted to call out to him, to take it back, but he was gone. My mind was getting fuzzier, the room was getting darker around me. All sounds started slowly echoing away from me into the distance. The last thing I heard was his voice. Fifteen years, I hope it was worth it. And then I was in total silence and darkness. Peace. What my death would have been had I not agreed to the deal. He was showing me, and it wouldn't have been so bad. But then, the light and noises started returning. Random shapes and sounds fused together in front of me. They slowly separated from each other and a structure started forming. Chaos and cacophony compounded into composition. Things started looking and sounding familiar. Recognizable, even. Before I knew it, I realized that the lights and shapes were forming into the hospital room I was lying in. A doctor was standing over me. My family was there with him. They all looked so happy. Congratulations, the doctor said to me. The surgery was an overwhelming success. I don't want to write about the ease of my recovery, of how my life went back to normal, or how I changed my lifestyle appropriately, or even how I still see that man from time to time, watching over me, reminding me of what I have in store always with that smile on his face. Instead, I want to repent, to acknowledge how wrong I was. All my life, I see it now. I see how selfish my actions were. I see how weak I was and how negatively my behavior affected those around me. Life isn't a game where you can do what you want all while ignoring the inevitable, and I think I always knew that. I knew I was letting them all down, that it would eventually catch up to me, but I didn't care. It was gluttony, plain and simple. It was a sin. I'll live my remaining 15 years as best I can, moment to moment. Maybe if I'm good, all will be forgiven, but I don't really believe that, repenting or not. No. I had already made my choice, and I know what's waiting for me. That pain, that emptiness, that hospital room, forever.